So the biggest dev stream ever was yesterday, essentially giving the outline of the future for the game. And it's two hours long, and I know you guys don't have that much time, so hopefully this is a nice, succinct little package of information. I'm gonna go over the major talking points. There might be little things that I leave out, but overall, um, it should get you the meat and potatoes of what was said. I'll hit major talking points, the reasons behind them, and how this affects Eternal Return's future. So let's get into it. First, let's start with something fun, the new characters. Theodore is gonna have this big ass gun. Vanya, who's a butterfly. Arda, who's coming from Immortal Soul, RIP, but this is my most like excited for pick. Then they have ice climbers, I mean, Debbie and Marlene, and yes, uh, there's also Lee on, and she transforms into a demon with these big ass hands. Then the battle pass is going to be pajama themed with Boar Hun Wu, Tiger Lee Dai Lin, Unicorn Adela, and Wolf Yuki. If you need some NP towards the battle pass, use the code Pajama Party. Um, you get 1,200 event NP, and it lasts two weeks upon redeem. A bunch of other skins will be added. Notable themes will be the winter skins, the school theme, and a few miscellaneous like the Panda Zhukai. If you wanna see if your main got a skin and you wanna see all of them, I'll link the Eternal Return tweet that has them all in the description. But let's get into what actually is going to change with the game. A big issue with the game is there's not enough objectives. If you've played ER long enough, you know there's going to be a ton of people contesting tree, meteor, or any of the rare resources. And when they get these rare resources, they tend to snowball, get gold items, and when someone has like three or four gold items and you have none, there's really not much outplay left there. So this is how they plan to fix it. So one thing they're going to do is making farming an actual option to stay competitive for people outside of Nadine. You get credits from wild animals, not just mutant, you get it from any animals around the map. Rare resources are actually going to be on wolves again, which is kinda hype, you have a new reason to check wolves. And when you get legendary gear, you can shred it and you can get something that you actually need, something you can actually use on your character. Along with all this, they are going to make delivery on rare resources two seconds rather than 10, so people can't steal your shit so easy. Also, they aim to make legendary items not so OP. So if you have like two legendaries up on a guy, it's not just an auto win, but the person who's down in legendaries can actually outplay them and win, <laughs> win the fight, you know? So a lot of unused features are also getting revamped. Epic food is gonna get perma stats. Escape is going to be easier, gives more LP. And if someone else shows up, it forces you to fight. Oh, and also the whole map knows if you have a cuff. <laughs> but you might be thinking, well, that might not change much. Maybe more people rat and just like farm out. But they're also adding battle zones. In the battle zones, they're going to be indicators when they show up on night two and three. And the rules are, if you step out, you die and you're forced to fight or the timer head booms you. Wait, aren't you both going to head boom at the same time? Well, there's objectives that refilled your gauge. It'll make more sense when they're added, but what I will say is it's really nice because if you die in the battle zone, you respawn. It's just a lot of fun to fight in this game and this lets you fight a lot more with a lot less risk. And if you win the battle zone, you get a mythic item, similar to the mythic items in Cobalt, but it's going to be more focused on the passives of the item, and they're not gonna be just like super statted out. They said legendary loot might be better than some of the mythic loot, so it's not always gonna be like, oh, you wanna go to the battle zone every time to get the mythic items. Ideally, this should be an objective outside of Alpha Tree Meteor. And then a few other things coming in season eight are Temple and Uptown are getting a remodel. Ranked will calculate LP like Apex Legends and is based off of lobby MMR rather than the individuals that you're fighting. They're reworking the tutorial and they're going to have cutscenes and voice acting and it's all in the works and it's going to come mid season eight. It does seem like there is a ton of focus on the tutorial, which I am super happy about since 
the biggest part of retaining players is new players just like don't know what the fuck they're doing. Okay, with all of that said, let's move to season nine real quick. It's going to be a very, very, very quiet season. The reason for this is it's going to be a season of optimization. They're essentially remaking the game because it sounds like they were working with spaghetti code off rip and they aren't gonna do a season pass. They're not gonna do any new features, but hopefully it should be nicely optimized. Also, I will note since it's a quiet season, they're giving away all the skins that season for free. And why is this quiet season of season nine so important? Well, it's going to lead us into season 10, which is going to be the full release of Eternal Return. Yep, you heard that right. It's finally coming out of early access. It's been in early access for so long. The player base has been on the decline as of late, so now it's time to go big or go home. They're going to full release the game of July of 2023, and the goal is to average 20k players. On Eternal Return's initial release into early access, their peak was 50k players, but obviously we didn't retain that. So hopefully things with like more objective to spice up the gameplay, with a ton of new player resources in the client, I think we might be able to retain these players. So what's gonna happen is on release, they're gonna ramp up the advertising in a major way, and then we see if we can retain those players with all the changes being made. If they don't, well, the game's probably dead. If they do, it's lit. <laughs> How I feel? I'm actually feeling more confident with the changes they're making. I only scraped the surface in this video about what they're adding to make it easier for new players. Um, they're making it easier to make food. Dr. Naja is going to walk you through the game similar to like a streamer or a friend would for a new player. And there's gonna be things like YouTube tutorials in client. In client is a very important aspect to that because 90% of the players don't go out of client and they're basing all of this around a test group that they're working with Gen G to test. And then based on how the test group responds, they potentially could rework crafting as well. This dev stream was actually day and night from last season's dev stream. Rather than just adding stuff to add it, I feel like it's being tested with a new player test group. The logic behind it is adding up, everything checks out for what they want to accomplish, which at the end of the day is retention and I'm optimistic. How are you guys feeling in the comments? I'd love to chat with you, love to talk, read all the comments. Regardless if the game succeeds or the game fails, we're all guaranteed to try out the Panda Zhukai skin. So, we're winning. <laughs>